All righty, welcome back, guys, What's up? to the Playbook Diaries, where there's a story behind every play. I'm your host, Jarden. And my name is Ice Cold. And today we are joined with my good friend and my former co worker, uh, Mr. Hialeah himself, uh, Wake Forest football alum, Ooh. former Hawaii offensive line coach, and former Minnesota Vikings assist, assistant defensive line coach and the current offensive line coach for the Oregon Ducks. If it walks like a duck and it blocks like a duck, he probably by, got recruited by the one and only Elite Terry. Hey! Go Ducks, yeah. <laughs> Welcome, my guy. Welcome. Mr. Hiley, I feel like Pitbull now, for real. Is that what they call him? No, he missed the Miami. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, he missed the Miami. All right, so how are you, bud? I'm great. That was a tremendous intro. I appreciate Thanks. that. That's great. Thanks. It was a good intro. We need to record that and use that for recruiting. For, for real. sure. <laughs> that, was, that was hard. That was hard. I'm great. I appreciate y'all having me. So what brings you to the D? We are in Dallas. What brings you here? D-Town to recruit. There's ballers here. Ballers? So if there's ballers, I'm probably going to be there. Yeah, this is one of the best regions for it. Oh, mm -hmm. my gosh. I mean, just the state of Texas, obviously, but Dallas specifically. You can go anywhere and everywhere. You can, you can go to about seven, eight schools and find at least one kid, Easily. probably 25, 30. If, I mean, there's kids everywhere around here. Yep. All right. So in true Playbook Diaries fashion, we are going to start off with our first quarter, which is called The Combine, where we ask right. our guests a series right. of quick, rounded questions that the average person maybe or maybe should not know. All right. All you right. ready? The combine, I'm probably, just, I ran a slow Let's 40. See. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see All right, I'm. Nicole, go ahead and pop us off. Okay, so how many stripes does the American flag have and what do they represent? 13 in the colonies. Okay. Okay. How many senators are in the U.S.? It's been a minute. What is there? 50? For each, and for each try state? again, try again. How many for each state? I was figuring one for each state. Go one by one. So it's just 100 because it's two for each state. Yep. Okay. We'll give you half a point for that one. Half a point. Half a point. I'll take that. Um, what layer of earth does weather occur in? The ozone layer? <laughs> is that a layer? It is. It is. Okay. <laughs> oh, so do you mean like clouds? You like, mean like stratosphere, Yeah, like where does, where, yeah, it's like stratosphere, troposphere. Um, I guess the ozone layer counts as a layer. Oh, okay. Isn't the ozone layer the ground? Yeah. No, nah, I thought no, the, ozone, the ozone layer protects us from the sun. Oh, so you don't know y'all asked me here, like, so is that a false start? Or like, the ozone no. so it, okay, so wow. We know the correct stratosphere. No, it is the troposphere is where troposphere. most weather occurs, yes. Do y'all believe that they can control the weather? I mean, are we not, technically not control? We're, not quite. Not, not really. I don't think not. I, don't I think feel so. like they can. Who's they? I don't know. It could be the government. It could be NASA. It could be whoever. I can. I feel like you can maybe press a button or two and force some clouds. So like for storms. Snow. I ain't saying snow, but like yeah, yeah there's videos of like people. Well, yeah, I think like they, that force I think like that the rain like clouds. Simulators, but I don't think that it's like as easy as press a button. I think that they can do other things to it's testing. like hypothetically yeah. to make certain other things occur. Now, don't be trying to distract us from the game, right? Okay, you still don't finish the round. Tro troposphere, stratosphere. Who is it? It's wrong. It's uh, we. I got damn, him. he just forgot me. Troposphere. Uh, troposphere. It was troposphere. You we supposed to know the answer. Maybe, I did. I maybe, said the answer, maybe but I'm I saying it wrong. Maybe it was, I'm saying it wrong, and y'all like now. Nah, it's the, no. It's troposphere. It's troposphere. It's troposphere. It happens in the trope. Okay. All right. What year was the first Super Bowl in? 1947. Damn. No. You sound so you a little early. Yeah, you a little early. I feel like I remember having a football. I know it was Green Bay Packers that won it. Was it? Yes, you're right about that. Was it 59? You're getting closer. You're getting closer. But it's still Thanks. too soon. So, 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 I would have, so if it's not that, it's 67? Yeah, yeah, 67. I, I feel like I remember I had a cool present. I think my pops got it for me like 15, 16. The football had all the Super Bowls on it. And I remember being Look how it's helping you now. Shout out to Pops. For the combine, literally. <laughs> See, Pops didn't even know he was, prepping, he was prepping me for the combine, literally. <laughs> right. Uh, largest state by land mass. Texas, ain't it? Nope. Oh, Alaska. Stop okay. playing. I'm, I'm no. glad you corrected yourself. But so don't do that because it's not <laughs> it's not connected. You feel me? People forget sometimes Alaska. But state. the largest state. People sometimes forget Alaska is a state because I mean it's connected. Because it's connected. It's connected. Okay. Because it's, yeah. okay. it's it's on the top of North America. That's a good excuse. Anyways, what's the largest bone in the human body? Femur. Yes. Okay. Good job. Where's the femur? I want to say the front side of the leg, ain't it? Yeah. 
Okay. Um, a PE clash. Yeah. <laughs> Phil Knight, the owner of Nike, went to what university? The school. What year? <laughs> I'm just kidding. We don't know. I'm about to say. <laughs> That's what I, was I don't know where your main man went there, but main man is definitely a ducky. Yeah, <laughs> he like is. Duck, talk like a duck. Let's go duck. <laughs> uh, what year did Marcus Mariota win the Heisman Trophy? I want to say 14. Damn. Yeah, you're right. That was my senior year of high school, so I remember, you remember that. that. Okay. And we tell that to almost every kid that want to play quarterback, come win the Heisman, baby. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which NFL franchise has the most Super Bowls? Ain't it the boys? No. But I appreciate it. Oh, it's Green Bay. We were just talking about it. No. The most Super Oh, New England. Now I'm tripping. Yes. yes. New England. How so many they got? My bad, Tommy. My bad. To get a point back, how Six. many Super Okay. All right. My bad, okay. Cool, 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 cool. My bad. The combine. You didn't I. Not, not a 4 4, but. I mean, I probably. Some teams probably like, damn, who is that? Wait, wait, wait. You got one more question. Oh, my bad. Come on. See, I can. How many questions increase, you got left? Increase my, my stock. You got one? Oh, okay. How many jersey combinations did Oregon utilize in the 2023 football season? This year? Yes. We made 14 games. We used 14 different combinations. Oh, so y'all never repeated the jersey once? Oh, repeated jersey repeat? Or a combo repeat? No, like we, I don't, if my understanding, there was, a, even if it was like a subtle difference, we might have worn, I know we wore eggshell twice and I know we wore the throwback twice. So we wore what? Just think about common combinations, like just... But combinations, that's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, So how many different combinations? Oh, did? different combinations. Not, okay, I get what you're saying. Yeah, oh. different combinations. Uh, just, it was not the same tops with yeah. the pants. And Shoot, for this year. I don't in, in 2023. 132. <laughs> Wait, Ali, <Alika>. He just <laughs> wants to. No, no, no. Like a shirt, like, one shirt and one pants is one combo. Oh, okay, okay. So we got a graphic that says like, we have like 20,000 different combinations. Yeah, no, we looked it up okay. and y'all do have a lot of combinations. Okay, so for, for just but, this year? Yeah, how many combinations did you utilize? How many different combinations did you utilize? So 11? 11 of them? You had 13. 13? 13. That's not bad. That, that's, that's not bad. Most that's not, schools only I'm have like say, three. It, it no, is, it's not bad. It's, how close he yeah, I won't, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I won't name other schools, but like being from Miami, mm -hmm. I know how much like swag means something. Yeah. Some people won't go to a school because they only wear one or two things. Maybe to somebody like me, that that's not smart. But. That happened to me when I was a recruit. I'm like, y'all don't even swag. That's out. what I it's Like some people, and there's people with great history where they only wear one or two things. For but sure. it's like, this day and age, most kids want to put that stuff on. What's your favorite uniform? <clears throat> like describe the favorite one for oh. the viewers that don't know the actual official names of the uniform. Uh, I probably favorite ever is probably the Ohana jersey. Is that the Means bright home. yellow and bright green? Okay. No, that's the throwback. Oh, okay. That's the one we wore in the bowl game. That's, okay, yeah. That's, that's pretty much probably like the consensus fan favorite. That's, that's mine too. It's like when the Daffy Duck OG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably my, my OG favorite one. But I think the Ohana was hard because it was like the deep. It's Oregon is about details. Details in that damn jersey. Yeah. Family. Ohana means family. All that kind of stuff. And it was like, it was hard. The well, describe was it. Hard. Was it the green, green jersey? We didn't wear black? it this year. Oh, you meant for this year? No, just, just in general. Out, it's yeah. like a, it was like a black jersey with like green and black grayish feathers on the side of it and it had like you know like the um, when like Polynesian gets the tattoos and mm -hmm. had like the tribal had pattern like tribal. it had like the tribal pattern on the helmet oh that's dope oh that is dope it like in the tribal pattern was like on the numbers and it was like details in it I mean Oregon we got a tremendous like Polynesian culture so it was a yeah, to yeah. Guys, oh. obviously Marcus Mariota yeah it was a tremendous tribute to this guy so and then like where every jersey you get, we probably get a ton of gear that go with it as far sure. as like the, tr the travel gear and stuff. Yeah. The Ohana drip was probably the best drip of it all. My favorite jersey, my favorite combo is the icy white with the silver. Helmet. With the, yeah, with the silver. We wore that Texas Tech, didn't we? I think we did. It's, the, it's like the chrome. No, it's, it's, it's fire. I know it's exactly. all white I don't with the chrome. Know, but I like the all white with, with the, like chrome. the silver. I think you like, did it twice. Oh, that's beautiful. Texas Tech and I think you do. What's your favorite? Uh, I like the chrome. That chrome. I like the chrome. I don't like. I don't always order. pick the all white jerseys because not too That's many people thing. wear all white. This in is football. it's naked a lot of times, like, and a lot of people don't do all white. So yeah. we do all white with the chrome. Is I think the best helmet we ever wore was was the Rose Bowl in nineteen. We wore like the chrome reflector helmet, and then at like sunset it was like an orange reddish sky, so it reflected. The orange wow. and red oh, pink. Oh, that's the, pretty. You can see it on film. We was watching that. It's probably like the hardest helmet I've ever seen. Did it not blind, block out some of the. <laughs> so, not, <laughs> like not, looking somebody at said field? that, though, and I don't play receiver at DB, but somebody said, like, certain people, you was going up for the ball when the sun was coming out. It was like reflecting off. You couldn't see. 
you know, somebody have a watch on, yeah. and they do that glare. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the trenches on, nothing matter. So what happens with all these uh, jerseys that when the players graduate, do they get to keep anything? Yeah. Or? So it, it's a cool little deal that our, our equipment manager, the GOAT, Big GOAT, Kenny Farr, shout out Big GOAT, he has every jersey that you're ever wear at Oregon. Awesome. And the NCAA, obviously, it'd be like an advantage if we just gave out the jerseys. So there's a system in place to make sure you purchase the jerseys legally and all that kind of stuff. But And he keeps them forever. Oh, that's dope. Okay. So like if there's a gentleman who maybe a walk on who doesn't even have the aspiration to go to the league yeah. two, three years after he worked a little bit, get some money on in his pocket. Oh, so he got to work two years. No, 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 no. I was going to say, <laughs> oh, my no, God. No, I was about to say, because you can come back and buy his 50 jerseys. Okay, oh, okay, okay, okay. You know okay. I mean? Yeah, yeah, I'm like, damn. I was like, like, he got to work two years to avoid the that's, that's, that's why it's like, it's, I guess it's a competitive advantage for us. We wear so many jerseys. Yeah. yeah. If you tell a kid, when you leave here, you're going to have all 50. For sure. The NCAA would probably deem that as a, an advantage, but Big Goat does it like, it's guys that, everybody, if you want to come back and get some drip. Yeah. You can come get, get some drip. Give it back to your family, give it back to you. So. That's dope. All right. So now we're going to get to the second quarter. This one's a little bit easier because it's all about you. A little water, a little tired right now. First quarter, a little bit. (laughs) All right, we'll let you drink that. And uh, quarter two is what we call our lottery picks, and that is where our guests um, we learn a little bit more about our guests through his or her answers. All right. So tell me when you're ready, and we'll kick it off for you. I mean, my, my combine had to be a little bit good, though. From a, it was decent. What did you get? Well, lottery pick, get right. you, you're a lottery pick. I mean, you did you, something. You, right. had, you had a pretty good you had like six, combine. Right? We've had faster times and faster <laughs> markers, but it was a good combine to start off. You so can make you, you can make like, your you way. Feel like, you feel like you win games with, 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 with my skills. That's all I meant. For sure. <laughs> Say less. All right, you ready? All right, this one's fast, too. You got to go back okay. to back. All right, favorite artist? Drizzy Drake. Good one. Favorite athlete across any sport? Sean Taylor, rest in peace, but that's not dead, LeBron James. Gotcha. Okay. Most difficult opponent you've had to face as a player or as a coach? Okay, as a player, probably Grady Jarrett okay. or Sheldon Rankins. As a coach, uh, and this ain't quick, but we I done, we done played a lot. I done played, a, I done coached against a lot of good players. Man, I don't, that's a hard one. I done coached a lot of hardest team that you've had to face then as a coach. The team. Uh, dang, probably you dubbed this past year. Okay. Obviously, they got to the national championship, or mm-hmm. in nineteen. Auburn, that first that first time we played Auburn, that was a it good was team. Tough. It was, like, it I was gonna say Bo Nix is probably like the. Because I'm not saying it because I was our guy this year, but it was funny. My first time I ever was coaching college, I lost to Bo Nix on his first game in high school. That's funny. So for it to come back full circle okay. this year and be the O-line coach for Bo and he have a high year, it was like, cool, like God. Yeah. God. Speaking of that, most influential coach? In my career? Like for me? Yeah. Most influential coach? For you. Yeah, Alex, for you. Alex Mirabal, the O-line coach at the University of Miami. Awesome. So I, I GA'd under him. So that's awesome. probably the most influential. Was that your first GA position? That was, yeah, at Oregon. So he was at Oregon. Got I, you I cranking up. Okay, cool. Okay, so we're going to touch back on yeah. your GAs. Yeah. Because okay. Mirabal, man, man. Um, favorite sports movie? Coach Carter. That's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> one rule that you live by. Do to others as you would want done to you. That's a good one. Uh, your football Mount Rushmore. Four. Four people? Mm-hmm. Sean Taylor's one of them. Mount Rushmore. I got to go second. Dang, I'm a football like lover, so I, I apologize. This is going to take long. Um, Sean Taylor, one. Randy Moss, probably two, because we never seen nobody like Randy just go dunk on people. I love receivers. Uh, O-line, I got to put Joe Thomas just because he was just consistent, freaky, everything. Okay, and one then more. one more. I gotta put Tom Brady because that boy really him. Okay. Really him. All right. Favorite pregame meal? As a player, <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. as a player, it was more whatever reason like mashed potatoes. Okay, mashed only. potatoes. No, no, not only, not only like before a game. No, nah, like don't, don't let anybody fool you. Like pregame, most people eat this 
it's the, at the hotel if you when you plan for sure uh -huh. it's like the same options yeah so like for me it's like the, car, yeah. you know what I'm saying? so like the baked chicken like what i look forward to is like the mashed potatoes like you know how some people like eat the pasta before it's true because i yeah. really like mac and cheese so yeah. i i look forward to a mac and cheese side there it is but, but i wouldn't even pick up the mac and cheese on game day on game yeah, day. yeah that's, that's what i'm saying, saying like, like for the for, for the pre-game meal you would I do mashed potatoes. Like that's the one, like me. That's you can eat that as a player and then go play a couple hours later. I would do a baked chicken, like some green mm -hmm. and some mashed uh -huh. potatoes. They football players. Okay, so, so like, I felt like spaghetti or pasta was like too heavy on me. Yeah, uh -huh. I didn't want to eat a sandwich because I just felt yeah. But I feel like potatoes was like a good source of energy, I guess. So that's what just, happens when you have to use the restroom during the game? Time I'm not trying to be funny. Like what? Or what other than that, like anything you consume when you have the boo boo? It's true. I no, mean, me, me immediately after, like oh, 15, so like, so 20. You, so, you got, like, so you got pressure with potatoes. That's what it is. That's, that's, what, yeah. <laughs> that's what it okay, okay, like. okay, okay. So, like, how you feel about potatoes is how I feel about onions. Really? I call it onions because I can't do them. Wait, so you like, never. Because you, you can saute them things. You don't like it. But if I eat them, it make onions do me how potatoes do her. <laughs> okay, you do not have to keep <laughs> rubbing. My thing is, you know what's like, crazy? Now we talked about that. Um, I've never put on any football gear before other than a helmet. Is it easy to take it off to use Russia? Nah, so that's the thing. Like, what like, are y'all wearing? So you're wearing tights. I mean, if you want to wear a cup, guys can wear a cup. I didn't wear a cup. But some guys wear cups. But you wear tights. And then, like, now the tights, you got the pads in them. And then you put your pants over. Oh, Now the pants. Wait, there's two pairs of pants? No. There's, like, tights with, like, pads in them. And then you put the pants on. Okay. Now the pads are in the pants. So you just got to wear your tights. And you just put the pants on. Gotcha. So if you got to. Okay. Now, but that's my thing. If you. Pre-game, you ate like two, two and a half hours, three hours before you even did anything. So you probably got that up at you already. Okay. So you ain't got to use the restroom. Okay, but as a coach, do I, you I, ever have a situation where it's like, I got to go to the restroom right now? Like, uh, how nah. would that work? Would you just be like, somebody take over these it's really not the time. Yeah, I was about to say, like, I, I think the body just naturally, like, just... It's not the time. Because the adrenaline is Unless you, like, got to pee. Yeah. Because you, like, hydrating and stuff. I don't think you're really thinking about, like... It's not the time. Oh, I got a boo-boo. I really don't think you like it. I mean, like, nobody's ever... I mean, it's happened. Because I've heard horror stories. Like, it's football now. There's people that's out there. Like, you ever heard the stories of people saying they're pissing on, on, yeah. the, on the pile and stuff like that. But, like, now it's it's, <laughs> it's 2023. Like, there's They press a button. There's a bathroom on the, on the Boom, sideline. yeah. The bathroom, like, pop up, and it's like a porta potty awesome. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So, if I got to go use the bathroom, I could be quick. But in the game, I don't have to. But as a coach, I don't eat nothing pregame for that reason. So, okay. I don't have to worry about moving. All right. Your last question for lottery picks is... One of the last. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soap of choice. Uh, I'm big on dye bar soap. I wear. Bar, I'm a bar soap Ooh. dye person. I can't. I don't like Dove. Dove. I feel greasy. Liquid soap. I feel greasy. Dove. Dry. I feel like leaves a residue. That's what I'm saying. So I see, and you know, moisturizing. So that, I seen some on Twitter, and Twitter you can learn. Some of you BS, but somebody was like, Dove is a moisturizing mo lotion. I mean, soap. Excuse me. Yeah. And dye was like a cleansing. It's soap. an antibiotic. So you, like, you're supposed to. Yeah. I don't know. Does that mean you're supposed to like? Wash up with Dow and then finish off with Dove. Like Dove do smell good, mm -hmm. yeah. but I feel like Dow clean you and you smell good. I feel Dow, like it I'm makes a me a set like a, a safe clean. Yeah, like not. I feel like I still be dirty when I use Dove or just still, liquid yeah. soap. I don't and like, I like and then like COVID. after COVID, I was like Dial only. Oh, trust. And it's the simple one, the uh, the white one. Yeah, no, I, no, I just became a fan of the yellow one. The yellow one, five. So three. yellow one is my number one, but they just came out with the purple one, and I like that one. Every yeah, now, the and white one, one like. Dwayne Wade, the yellow one like LeBron James. I like these. <laughs> <In my rankings. laughs> okay, speaking of that, Dame or Steph? Steph. Okay. I, got, I have a great question. I don't want to. I, I can go into a, a deep thing about that. You can go ahead. Who is the goat in y'all eyes, LeBron or Mike? That's your next question. So okay, LeBron okay, perfect. Or Mike? Okay, so perfect. So you said Steph, right? <laughs> and I love using Steph, but I love the fact that you use Dame. Um, it's Bron in my eyes. I said and I understand the OGs. I really do. I'm gonna say this first. Braun versus MJ is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. But even then, I say it's Braun, and I, I respect the OGs. But you know, when COVID happened, we had some time off. For sure. And what people don't realize, ESPN Plus put a whole mess of throwback games on TV. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was on ESPN Plus. I'm talking about playoff games, all this. Everything. And I'm I'm no basketball. I love basketball. I'm I'm dope. Like when I, when I compare, I'm they're still good. Don't hear me wrong. They're still yeah. good. Mm -hmm. But as I watched that, I, I called my dad like angry. Like man, you was lying for so long. I thought these jokers was out here playing with brass knuckles <laughs> and like they playing physical ball. And it's like they were playing good ball. Obviously, the technology and stuff wasn't advanced. 
Yeah. But the people Mike were playing against, was he, was, not, yeah. he was clearly the best player on the court. Yeah. And I mean it where Mike was 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, wherever he was. Yeah. Dennis Rodman was the enforcer at that time. Mm-hmm. Ron is two inches taller, 40 pounds bigger than Dennis Rodman, who was the enforcer. So if you can mentally sit here and say LeBron couldn't be able to do handle it in them times, oh he would be crazy. You just yeah. you just saying that you just saying that because you think it was physical. When I watched that stuff, it really wasn't even all that physical. Yeah. There may have been a hard foul here too, but, but like, like that. it wasn't like every time you came up the court, somebody was mashing know. you in. For sure. But saying that to say, Dame and Steph, I say Damian Lillard. This is my this is how I use this example. Is Damian Lillard a really good player? I think so. Damian Lillard, Lillard is a good player. He's a great player. If Dame played in Mike's era, how would we consider Dame? Uh, I don't know. Okay, I'm trying to get. I'm trying so to see where you're getting. I, at. So I say, if Dame was playing in Mike's era, I'm not saying he'd be Mike, but he would be like, oh my gosh, who in the world is For sure. Dame Lillard? Yeah. The game is just more advanced. Now. So that, that's so that's my yeah. there it is. So the game is you more the alley advanced. And I just dunked it. Yeah. LeBron James is the best player in the best era of basketball. Yeah, how is he not the best basketball player? Ever? Yeah, I mean, I think that. <clears throat> because of technology and be- because the game has advanced so much, I think that you have no choice but to say LeBron. Yeah. Just because, like, first of all, the, like how fast the play is as yeah. well is better. super fast. Like you mentioned, when uh, during Mike's time, it's like it, they were. It just mm-hmm. seems like it was slow tempo motion. Plays. The supporting yeah. cast in today's time, the supporting players, the role players are better. The competition is more fierce. You cannot just take any game as is. You really don't know, you know. And it's nobody's fault. Yeah. Like the game's getting better, and that's and it's a good thing. Like and what I say is because Mike was the first, don't mean he was the greatest. What yeah. Mike was, yes, he went six and zero. He went six and zero because <clears throat> did he have to go against the three best shooters of all time in the finals? No. Braun went against KD, Steph, and Clay in the finals, and we sit here talking about some, but he didn't go any feeder in the finals. On, on one, on that's one, what I'm saying. One, and there's no disrespect to Mike. 72 10 team. If you really just do facts. I'm sorry, 73 9. 73 9 team. And I just do facts. I'm not even. You have off the top of your head? Girl, oh, I, love it. I do this. That was legendary. 73 9. That's Whoa. the best record ever. Ever. And you like, oh, but he's never went undefeated. Mike didn't go to the finals for a little bit of a minute because he couldn't get past them boys in Boston and Detroit, so, too. For so, sure. Yeah, so it's like. I get it, but I'm glad you chose Steph, though. Yeah, but Steph's the greatest. Sh- the other night, I, I you was, just went to the game. I was recruiting in San Fran. I Why finished not? for the day, and it's like 5:50. I see San Francisco on the exit. I'm like, dang. Let me Google if they got a game tonight. They had a game. My like one of my. I, I think Steph and Clay are the best shooters of all time. So not I'm, you think they are. They are. They are. Obviously, they I are. wanted to see with my own eyes. Yeah. So I, I, that was a great experience. I told you I went to school in the Bay, and uh, my teammate. His dad was Chris Childs, who punched Kobe, Kobe in, the face. in the face. Oh yeah! So he used to send us tickets all the time, and I used to go to the games all the time. I'm like, this stadium is electrifying. So, and that I'd have been to a lot of sporting events, not as many as her. The arenas, but <laughs> the the fans and stuff, and like I had the time of my life uh-huh. because of like the people that work there and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Like, like everybody's just happy. Man, Great. it's. Yeah. But you could tell there's been a lot of winning in that place. Yeah, easily because they had the two of the best shooters ever to play the game. For sure. Mm-hmm. So, what, since you say that, what is the best? This is gonna be hard to answer because of the dynamics. You're always a coach or the player. But what was one of your favorite stadiums, or what was the most memorable stadium to play in, either as a coach or as a player? Because I have my favorites. Yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to be funny. If you, she done been to some stadiums. My favorite stadium playing, which is weird, was Notre Dame. It was right before they, they had elevated their stands. You could still see Touchdown Jesus. Uh-huh. So that was cool because all the stories of Touchdown Jesus and the Notre Dame and the history of that. So mm-hmm. that was probably the best one as a player. Coaching <clears throat> was hands down the uh, Rose Bowl. I can see and that. The granddaddy of them all. Uh-huh. We played Wisconsin. I like your head. Are you from Texas? Nope, not at all. Oh, I mess with it. <laughs> I don't, don't even know why you did that. <laughs> Miami, I mess Miami, with it. Miami, Florida. A Texas native, I appreciate. I appreciate seeing the now, this, no, 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 this is a hard hat. This company, they it's all the Texas... Uh, like logos mashed together, so it's like Rangers. I see Cowboys. the Rangers. If you keep it. I see the Astros. It's I mean, I see the Rockets. It's subtle stuff. I see yeah. the Astros. So this Texas company Rangers, do it. I see the Cowboys. Where did you get the hat from? This company is called, and I may pronounce it wrong. It's like Feet L A Pete, but it's called. It's, it's spelled P H E I T. Fight Feet, whatever. You, however you pronounce okay. It. Okay. Feet. Feet. Maybe it's Feet. I don't know. But it's elite. <laughs> shout out to that. Yeah. Shout out to the <laughs> shout out to L A hats. And I got Dane there, all of them. Every color. No, they have like 
Yeah, I think I like two in Texas, but they have like every state. Oh, oh, so they got like oh, Florida nice. one, obviously, with like the, all the logos. Mm-hmm. Texas one, a Colorado one, California one. There's a bunch of different design stuff you do, and I, I love hats and sneakers. So look into that. Look into your camera and show your head yeah. on. Yeah. Okay. So look at all the Texas logo on one of these sides. It's got like yeah, there. Any of the hats like those emblems <clears> and stuff. <throat> I'm a fan of. We'll so zoom we'll zoom in during editing. For sure. All right, so guys, we are going to move on to the third quarter, which is called the play review. And this is where we get into the meat of the interview, the entire reason why we thought you'd be a great guest because we want to pick your brain on a couple of things. So, Nicole, you want to ask the first question? You want so me to ask the first question? The meaty, nitty gritty, no halftime, get no orange slices. It's <laughs> funny that you say that. We're, we're no Gatorade. It, it is funny that you say that. And it's funny that you say that. Speaking of our halftime show, we want to thank our amazing sponsor, BizGo. They form your business. You get the hell up out of there. We want to thank BizGo for forming our podcast business, our LLC, and our C Corporation at a fraction of the cost. Expedited time. You guys are amazing. Let's get into the third quarter. Shout out BizGo. Shout out to BizGo. <laughs> All righty. So first question, you are, how old are you? 28. You are 28? Are you 28 or are you 27? You're 27. No, I turned 28 in October. What, what year is it? 2024. Yeah, yeah I'm 28. Not, not you having to. He had to figure out his age. Like, because like once you get like once you get to 25. Yeah, no, no. Like, after I 25, see, I'm like, I see oh. like wow, all our old folks used to be like, uh. Yeah. Because once like, you just get older, you just yeah. I'm just getting older. Yeah, I'm 28. Okay, so you're 28. You are one of the youngest coaches in college football right now. And so, despite being extremely young, when compared um, to your counterparts compared to the athletes that you coach, you were still very well received by Oregon's fans, their coaches, and their athletes. So talk to us about how you garnered that support. Because, you know, most people aren't excited to hire young. Mm-hmm. Not that young. Uh, I think it's a, it's a mixture of a bunch of things. Uh, <clears throat> I was a GA there. For how so- long? from 19 to 20 for two years. Okay. So the work was kind of put in. That was like the foundation. For sure. That was like, and during that time, there was a ton of success as well. So if there's success- They're okay with it. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, if you're doing something well, somebody watching. Yeah. So when I was there as a GA, he was just working my butt off. So I think that appreciation and support is more so because like I was a Duck fan coming out of high school. I wanted to come to Oregon. Mm -hmm. When I got the job, the GA here, I was like, oh my gosh. And I treated that like that every day at work. Like, if you ask anybody that go to work, I'm lit <clears> every <throat> day. Practice. I can imagine. I'm, 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 I used to work with a yeah. leak. <laughs> shout out to Orange Bowl. Shout out to the Orange we Bowl was committee. Lit. We was lit in the Orange Bowl. Remember? I mean, we would have to be at work at 7 a.m. Mm-hmm. And a leak would come in like it was 2 p.m. And we, I just be like, oh, my God. Everybody else like, huh, here we are. It's a grind, though. Yeah. That's, it's so funny because so many people aspire to work in sports, mm-hmm. whether it's from coaching, whether it's from operations, whatever it is they aspire to work in sports. It's a grind. Point blank. And that's it the, is a grind. It's, it's crazy you say hours, that. And yeah. it's crazy like how that happened like now because we were at the Orange Bowl. And maybe you remember, what did I say I wanted to do when I was working at the Orange Bowl? You wanted to coach. I wanted to get back in coaching. I'm like, I mm-hmm. wanted to do this coaching deal. You did something at the end of it where whenever we were all finna go back home, <clears throat> because the Orange Bowl is, uh, how do we say seasonal. it? Like it's, yeah, it's a it's seasonal, seasonal position. Job. So we all got our experience to build up our resumes and everybody's about to depart and go home. And so we were talking about um, how, like what we, what our plans were for the future, what everybody was about to get into and stuff like that. And you mentioned that and you were looking into some type of apprenticeship with a coaching. Like It was something with coaching. Mm-hmm. You mentioned it. Mind you, this conversation was, while ago six years ago it was the end of 2020 no it was, tw- it was 2019 yeah, it, was it was january it was right before the world stopped. it was yeah it, it was right before the world no it was stopped. it was 2019 we were there tw- we, we got there august no we got there august 2018 18, and left, left december january 19 yeah yeah dang yeah so six years See, ago that's crazy to think about that is, that is very crazy, crazy to and, think we, about. and I, was, I remember vividly like talking and being with y'all and be like i want to get back into coaching because mm-hmm. i had got to end up going back to wait because my online coach ended up calling like it's Look at this time. full circle moment. Yeah. So, so why you say full circle? You said grind. I ended up only going to work for the Orange Bowl because I medically disqualified my senior year in yeah. college. So I already got a little bit of taste of coaching. But I'm like, I've been doing football my whole life. My family is football. Everything is football. So I'm like, let me go try the real world for a little bit. For sure. Yeah. 
how the world works. Our dude that we worked for, Johnny Moss, well, I worked for, but it was in yeah. that base. My dad coached him when he was in high school. Okay. And I didn't even know that connection, like, through that process. I didn't do that through him for it. I just reached out. Yeah. And ended up doing it. But saying that to say, once I was doing it, I'm like, man, this stuff is a grind. Like she said, we'll be there at 7 a.m. When it got close to the game, we was leaving oh, that the, place. Oh, the whole month. What, what is it from November? November from, seven, we couldn't go home for Thanksgiving. You're working. We all got a Airbnb be, yep. with like 26 employees mm -hmm. because we're like, we can't, can't go home. Everybody came from all over the yeah. country. I'm, I'm from home. I'm from there. So yeah, it was we good. Everybody else. Was everybody else. We far. were from far. And mm -hmm. so it was like, well. We can't go home to our families. We have to work the next day, work on Thanksgiving. A lot of these positions, yeah. you don't, you might get paid, you might, might not. So you we really, really getting experience. Yeah. We're just getting, we're doing you're getting experience, experience, but you experience. struggling through it. We all struggle yeah. through it mm -hmm. together. But them hours during uh, about a month before bowl, the bowl game, it's ass. You're mm -hmm. you're working eighteen you're working. hours a day, and it's all and, and for people who don't know, working with the Orange Bowl, it's a you're catering to these teams yeah. and fans because mm -hmm. you provide an experience that you hoping every time somebody go to the Orange Bowl they want to come They think to about it. it. Yeah. But it's a grind to do so. And I'm thought to myself like there was a few nights that we was in there grinding and I'm like man if I'm going to grind like this in a profession I'm going to do it doing what I love. It's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. So it's true. that would have me like alright if I'm going to be working somewhere at 1 o'clock in the morning it's the grind, like you say. Anything to be successful, you have to grind. If we yeah. either of us stayed in the Orange Bowl we'd yeah. probably be really successful at Oh 100%. It if you grind. But I'm like I'm going to be waiting if I don't go to sleep because I'm going to watch a film all night, I'm smooth. I'm not going to do it because... For yeah. sure. Because we got to drive every Saturday around that time. Yeah. <laughs> so. I, did, yeah. I did Cotton Bowl for three years. You did so do Cotton Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. Cotton Bowl for three years. years. So it, it's a grind. People yeah. don't get it. You, it's a grind. Like you have to be... You're there 5.30 a.m. I'm not leaving until... Maybe 11, 12, yeah, yeah, maybe. We have days where it's we fun. didn't leave. They're like, get a hotel because y'all going right, right there. Yeah, yeah. it's fun, okay. but it's, it, it is a grind. We but I was like, if I'm going to be doing this, is because what I, it's a, you have to have a vision. Yeah. You have to have a vision. And it did it did what it needed to do. Once I got that on my resume, I was like, I can, I can go anywhere. That, that seven, eight months we worked together, yeah. that experience of what we had, and that was a shout out to Orange Bowl. They gave us a lot of freedom now. Yeah. Oh, they, they gave, gave us, us like a lot of freedom. Lots of freedom. Like we probably was wilding a little bit more than they ever done, but like we yeah. really did a good job. But y'all did a good job. We yeah. did a good job. We we made it. We made it lit. We made we it lit for sure. We had a good time, and I think it would have been a horrible experience if we did not like each other. Yeah. And I think like when we were in it, when we were all about to leave and go home, we all were talking, and we were like. This would have been miserable if y'all didn't like if each we other. didn't like each other. And we were like, thank God. We all like love each yeah. other, and we still talk to if each not, other. Like, like that's a, the whole group. That still was talks my to first other. like real job, other than like concession stand stuff. Yeah. So it was like, I ain't figured you was gonna be like lifers and family For with sure. people. But yeah. that's because we was all young, fresh out of college. Was our yeah, first yeah. Job. But that's not normal. And yeah. so like, I would tell my my family stories, and I'm like, we're having so much fun. Like I love these people. Like we all get uh, along. And my parents just used to always say, it's not gonna be like that every job you go to. I'm like, hearing that. Don't get used to say about sports though. Mm -hmm. Sports is a very targeted industry. So I say target in the sense of it's so many people's dreams, it's very little people's execution. Yeah. So the people who choose to work in sports, they tend to usually have a pretty good, they tend to, they tend to, you know, come in with, I really wanna do well, I wanna have a good time. You're coming in with a great attitude because it's so specific. Like you probably were on a team if you're trying to work in sports. You 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 really want to be there. Yeah, that's fact. You really want to be there. These other jobs like they don't want to be there. That's why they cranky. So that was like <laughs> I, when, I, when I was literally. Having, so and this and that's and ain't nobody fault. But it's like if you wake up in the morning, we got to be there at seven. It yeah. means if you live probably thirty. Minutes sometimes, sometimes because Miami traffic is horrible. So, it's like so you got to get up an hour fifteen minutes for. That's the whole. So that's how I can understand. That made me understand why some people are just old and angry all the time. Yeah. yeah. Because you wake up at five thirty to get to work at seven, you work all day, you get home, leave at five thirty, sit in traffic for an hour, get home at eight, you got an hour to yourself, and then got to wake up and do it again. And you I don't can see, job. I can see why you're angry. You don't, and then you don't even rock with what you do. Yeah. So I can see why you thirty eight. So it, it, it's a blessing to all that to say the yeah. appreciation I feel like that the people have at the University of Oregon is because. I really, truly do love what I'm doing. This is my dream job. For man, shout out to the people of, of Oregon making my man feel welcomed and all. Uh, Amazing. People say all the time, you from Miami? You like, I love that place. That is a big shift, but quickly, will you run down for us what, like your jobs, just before we get into the other questions, like your history? Because you've been at Hawaii, mm -hmm. Wake for, run through in like in chronological order. So after I left the Orange Bowl, I went back to Wake. 
and I was like a running back O-line analyst. So this is 2019? This is 2019 in January. Okay. I'm making like $400 a month. I okay. got blessed because Justin Haram, my, my teammate, my best friend, he still happened to be there for a six year. Okay. So I was there, Wake Forest. Then about midway through that, went to Oregon as O-line GA. Cool. Okay. Was there for two years. Once I finished that, was O-line coach at Hawaii. That was my first job. Went to Hawaii for a year. At the end of that year, Coach Landon called me back. I was an analyst at that time. The players spoke highly enough of me to him. Mm -hmm. He brought me back as an analyst. I was there for like a month, literally. I remember on Instagram. And then I left to the Minnesota Vikings. I was the assistant D-line coach. That was my first time on defense ever. He had to jump ship with that opportunity? It kind of was like, I couldn't say no to it. For sure. Because of what I wanted to do to be the Oregon offensive line you coach. You gotta. In college, hiring young is almost like a thing you don't do. But it's probably a little bit more feasible if you got NFL experience. Easily, yeah. easily. So, so you have to go. If I would have stayed as an analyst at Oregon, I probably would have been there for two, three years and worked my tail off. To get that credit score yeah. to... The, the credibility, yeah, you just mm -hmm. make, there you go. I would have been paying the monthly payment for sure. You're going to you wouldn't afford the house, yeah. You're going, you couldn't get the house. Going to the league, <laughs> yeah. Going to the league, I basically paid it in cash, you like, know, you, yeah. You're giving it to me, so that presented itself. And it's, it's, it was a great experience to be around people. A guy, a, a, my, one of my guys, a guy I played with, Stevie Donatel, okay. his dad was the DC, he just happened to be looking for an offensive guy to coach, awesome on the other side. And kind of God, once again, mm -hmm. Stevie D's my guy, called and interviewed in the rest of his history, and then as soon as he Year was over, Coach Landon called me back. And I was like, this is my dream job. And so now you're at Oregon. Mm -hmm. You had a very, very great season. Very mm -hmm. successful season. Great year. Uh, you, your offense mm -hmm. was one of the top offenses in the country. Offen Let's go. in the country, yes. Mm -hmm. Y'all, Oregon's offense this year allowed the least number of sacks, mm -hmm. correct? Yep. That's a major that's stat. That's a resume. That's a, that's a big stat. I, I, you see how how tough that was for you? Because you know, I know you're watching the receivers and stuff. She was like, at least. I'm, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, I'm like, nah, I mean, that's, yeah. And I mean it. And like, <clears throat> and it's not just like, the word humble is like unique. Because like the real definition of humble is like, but it's more of appreciation. Because mm -hmm. we had a bunch of young guys. But like when you do this, all you do is work to make other people better. Easily. And if that's going to be the outcome, hello. It's a good thing. We competitors, goddamn. But as I want to be like an animal. We got guys that were committed and committed to our process, committed to our grind. We got a great team, great players. And this is not – this is a little bit of a recruiting pitch, but it's because we literally have the best on the best against each other every day at practice. Yeah. Okay. So well, speaking to, of that, actually – to the game. Life is a little bit easier when you're in Oregon, for real. Because practice is so hard. It's Training so hard. is so hard. Iron sharpens iron. For sure. Speaking of that, um, you guys, Oregon, mm -hmm. has a crazy solid recruiting class. So mm -hmm. tell us – a little bit about some of the challenges that come with recruiting at Oregon. Um, I think some of the biggest challenges. I mean, there's, there's there's some challenges like anything, but like this year's a testament that they they're, they're gonna be there. Wasn't much. Yeah, yeah. They, but they ain't gonna be much. I think some of the biggest challenges, as weird as it is, is other people loves to keep our name in their mouth. Yeah. Because I oh, like on their recruiting on their trips, recruiting, like okay. whether it be trips or whatever. Because I guess it, it is you're talking to a bunch of kids where. 65 to 70 percent of the country, these young men, their dream school was Oregon at one point. Yeah, yeah. So I guess that's probably why some people just feel like, oh, you like Oregon, man? That place so far, this, then the third. So I think really the only negative about the University of Oregon is the distance. Yeah, I, I, I can imagine that because you're when you're recruiting, you're actually recruiting children, and not to diminish the players, but an 18 year old male or female is still a child. I would have I would have considered myself a child up until like 23. You just hit it You're on the still head. a child and so the thought of going <clears throat> to the tip point of the country and most people that you're recruiting when you think of just the demographics of football it's not that state world, not it's not yeah that. it's not Oregon. The funniest part is as factual as that is what about their mama and daddy? They like, I'm not sending my baby that far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's like, as much as it is you, I learned that in Hawaii. I yeah. figured yeah. we about to get anybody and everybody and we about to turn this up. Mm -hmm. And then you're talking to a young man and then you get his parents on the phone and it's, I can't come see my baby in Hawaii. Yeah. Can't. That's expensive. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. the only issue of Oregon is really just a distance. Yeah. Because then parents love to say, I don't have easy access to my kid. Yeah. How many people you know went to school in their town and never went back home? happen all the time so it's like <laughs> you feel like you can sleep better at night if he's two hours three hours away but knock on wood how like when does something really ever truly happen in college that you got to go get to your child 
Yes, you should always have access to your child. Yeah. But if that's going to be a limiting factor in a decision to go to a great university to further yourself, let them grow. Mm -hmm. You're really sacrificing the thought of something negative. You letting that trump what the actual benefit of. Man, you come out to Oregon. There but that's is, scary. It is without a doubt. But mm -hmm. anything to grow and adjust and yeah. to be able to mat mature in a way that makes you successful in life. It's probably gonna be scary. For sure. So do you You gotta do that. Do you like mention that to the high school coaches? Yeah. Like with the recruiting, like I think you that's need part to get of, in this person's head. Like, that's the question. For yeah. real. The first question I ask, especially just being at University of Oregon, do you think him and his family, the issue of going across the country, will it be an issue? Yeah. And I, I gotta do that due diligence and filtering out too, because we can recruit a guy all we want. If his his mama like, I'm not sending my baby out there. I gotta understand. You, that. Yeah. Yeah. I can work and try to try to convince her, like maybe this is it. We've done that before. Yeah. You know, somebody's stirring their beliefs that their baby. We got from Oregon, we got guys from we got the most diverse team. Everywhere, in the yeah. The yeah. Uh, you can have I was, we everywhere. looked at the roster. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, yeah. From everywhere. From and everywhere. That, that makes the college experience even better. You know, I didn't know it at the time, but me going across the country for college, because I'm from uh, Arlington, Texas, and then I went to San Jose, California. I didn't realize how much it grew me <gasps> as an individual. And now that I'm a woman, as a woman, I didn't realize how, how much character development that provided me and how I, much I grew up. And I, how I can only imagine how much that made you grow up because I think about how much I grew growing up in Arlington, Texas and going down the street two and a half hours to OU. Different culture, different but everything. But it wasn't that two and a half hours was a feisty two and a half hours. It's like <laughs> Dallas. Yeah. Is not Oklahoma. For it's sure. like very Oklahoma's very slow pace. Mm -hmm. You're we went to a predominantly black high school. Yeah, but the city of Arlington, Texas, is extremely diverse. It's one of the most diverse cities in the country. And then you go to this town where you're very obviously the minority, and it's like, oh my gosh, I've never been the minority. Yeah, anywhere. So it was culture yep. shock. I'm like, come get me. So I can't imagine how much you grew. Being Cali was that far. I, you know, you go to even when you're turning up with your friends in Texas, you're like in a hot ass room, turning up, you know, smoke, all that stuff. California, we're having parties, you know, at the beach, yeah, outside, rooftop, roof, at the rooftop, <laughs> yeah. we're having bonfires. Yeah. You know, people are, you know, yiking and doing, I'm like, what is this? But yeah. it's a vibe. Mm -hmm. So I can only imagine how these student athletes, you know, grow so much just by going all the way out to Oregon. I mean, say that to the parents, like it's char good character development. Okay, so my question is, you said it's character development. From a coaching perspective, because when I was um, working for a university, our issue with recruiting was we would bring players from, you know, all over the country and you bring them to slower paced. Yeah. This slower paced city. And then it's like, we didn't do anything to help them get in the rhythm of being in this town and the things that they were doing they that were, were acceptable where they're from. That's not acceptable yeah. here, nor is it needed most of the time. So like, how does this, the staff and the university help the players get acclimated to the lifestyle of Oregon? I think that's the biggest thing that goes underestimated in coaching. Mm -hmm. Like as much as I feel like we had a successful year, mm -hmm. it's because I think we have a great temperature and culture on our team where our guys are like truly happy and they can play some good quality football. For sure. For mm -hmm. that reason. Like that part, half of that stuff, you kind of filter out the recruiting. Yeah. As much as you can. Mm -hmm. Like you bring them up multiple times so they can see it, know what it's like, know what the environment is like. Mm -hmm. But it's like in, as you're recruiting, you're hoping you're not getting guys that that will be an issue with yeah in all honesty like you get them prepared because that's my job to get them prepared as far as being a man like i'm from miami and it's fast paced as ever i yeah. love eugene oregon for that reason yeah the anthony thomas said he's like i love he was from like if i'm not mistaken i believe compton he was like i love you oregon and i was successful there because i was able to focus on football mm -hmm. so it's really just more so wherever you go it's probably gonna be a culture shock from where you're from period yeah. no uh -huh. matter where you go and like you just said that's the part of growing most people who stay home you're still have the mm. boundaries of your people that you think is right. You don't Where get I'm that from, growing aspect. The things yeah. I say or do are not responsible in the world of business, in the world of yeah. of jobs and all that. It's mm -hmm. true. But there's people back home who do that and they're successful, but it's just in that limit or whatever in that area, fashion yeah. is. Yeah. Because in Miami, there's a, a market for that. Yeah. In Eugene, Oregon, there's no market for that. You can't do that. The, we play football since you were three years old in Miami. Mm-hmm. Somewhere else, most of the kids don't start playing football until they get to middle school. But you go to college away from there, you get so much more of an experience because I'm just big on this. Remember what you 
your reality is not everybody else's. So true. Yeah. Your reality is not everybody else's. Because where I'm from, it's treacherous and whatever. Where that person's from, it might not be treacherous. Not case. That's not the case. So yeah. I learned that because I went to Wake. Wake mm-hmm. Forest is a PWI, predominantly white institute. Mm-hmm. In what city? In Salem? Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Okay. You're talking about a culture shop. Yeah. But I probably handled it a little bit better than anybody, most people, because I'm from Miami and it's already a melting pot down there. Yeah. But that was my first real experience with like racism. When I was when, when I went to, when I went to wait because at Miami the racism uh, yeah, was from so, police yeah. from the cops the melting pot in Miami. like that was the first time I was in a restaurant I could truly feel like okay these it's people don't me. want me in this because yeah. I'm a brother yeah you know okay. what I mean so but saying that to say then you and racism is never it's the worst thing in the world mm-hmm. but I've also come to realize somebody may be racist because they just truly think where they from. That's, that's right. cool that's, to say. That's just yeah. what it is. Nah, homie, that's not cool to say. The fuck, when I was young, it was, wow. It's funny Beat you upside that. the head. Yeah. As I got older, it's like, it yeah. takes life experience to realize, damn, what my norm is. It's not. And I, I'm, the first thing I want to do is punch him in his face. And his mind, his parents have been telling him since he was two years he old. That. Yeah. That's a good thing to do. Right. So yeah. then when you have that conversation, like you said, culture, cultural shock, cultural reform, cultural expansion. Man, being a human in this world is understanding. That's why I say treat people. That's my life rule is mm-hmm. treat people how you mm-hmm. want to be treated. However you think I move in life, <clears throat> just treat me right. Yeah, it's true. When I went to uh, um, California, that was my first time where people who were not black were very, very comfortable saying, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I was caught off guard because um, I'm walking around and the Hispanic guy is saying the N-word and I'm like, and we're in Texas. Why, 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 <laughs> we're in I'm Texas. asking my black friends, why didn't nobody move? That's and that's the culture. We don't do that in Miami. <laughs> Our people know Man, not to do that in Miami. The Spanish people say it more than black folks. I mean, so like in my like, so even I in Carolina, even in Carolina, when things were like happening, mm-hmm. like I'm used to Spanish people saying it so much that like that word. If, if, once again, yeah. racism was different. Yeah. Unless you call somebody with the ER, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not a in my in, in our eyes in Miami, it's like. Every third line say it. Like, yeah. yeah. Don't be out here saying it because you want to be disrespectful. Yeah. yeah. But if you in your house, brother, that brother probably saying it in his house. Yeah. It's true. It's true. Yeah. Because he hear on everything. It's true. But if you come out your house and you call me an ER, that means you have you have derogatory mm-hmm. meaning at For sure. Yeah. So then at that point, however somebody reacts to that, that's on you, boss man. For sure. But yeah. if you ready to flip the whole place out because he singing a little the baby song. Right. And <laughs> you feel me? he feeling it like that. I mean, <clears throat> Damn. I had to learn a little bit to chill because mm-hmm. they gave the same, the similar story that he just gave, mm-hmm. and I and I was like, oh, well, where I come from, like our non-black friends know not to cross so, that yeah. line, yeah, and it's just cool. But <laughs> you're, I was in an environment where like everybody's saying it, yeah, they're it was, not saying it to you, yeah, yeah. But are they gonna really skip it in the song? Yeah, it was a different experience for me in Oklahoma. Like, it wasn't like a confrontational person. It was like a, I'm scared, like. Mm-hmm. I get me out of here right now. I'm talking yeah. like environment. I, environment. because Oklahoma, well, Oklahoma is a public university, mm-hmm. so you can't kick anybody off the campus. Yeah. And so I just remember I'm walking to class and I'm literally getting my ass beat in college. I'm like, I literally don't. And I see the KKK, like full uniform, mm-hmm. full oh, hat. On campus, it's on my Facebook. It's on my Facebook still. Came mm-hmm. up as a memory a couple of days ago. So I'm like, and so my heart is like beating. I'm like, oh my gosh, like it's 8 a.m. Like it's not a lot of people out here. It's just me. I'm like, I'm definitely the only black person out here. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And this girl's like, just walk past me. I'm yeah. like, okay. Yeah. okay. Like, this is the norm. Cultural And kids, you not like that. I mean, and, and I'm like, they can't move off campus. Like, no, it's a public university. Just ignore him. He's not going to touch you or say anything. And that's the craziest part. And when I don't even know how to like, and I'm, I don't even know how to properly say this. What's that? But it's like the vibe on the West Coast from people who are not of your culture mm-hmm. is a more, a little bit more accepting than the East Coast. And that's just in my opinion. Vibe on the West Say it West one more time. Okay. So the vibes of the West Coast of people of other cultures uh-huh. that aren't your culture. Yeah. On the East Coast. It's in more the, tolerant. In, in the South, if somebody's not of your culture, they maybe judge you a little bit more. Oh, yeah, than yeah, yeah, yeah. The West. They're more open-minded. Yeah, they're, more, out West, they're more tolerant. Out West is a little bit more like, just be yourself, do what be you, you do, be you. Yeah. In the South and stuff like that, like there's certain schools and places you know if somebody has a bad play, they're about to talk about who they are as a, Period. how they look. Yeah. yeah. I don't think that's truly an issue. There's bad people everywhere. Yeah. But I think it's more prevalent in the South than it is out West. Out West, you can truly, whoever you are, you be yourself. It's, it's really true. And I will say that too. When I was in the West Coast, I felt like 
Um, I, I felt like the South were more blunt, mm -hmm. but I felt like in the West, I was less judged. Yeah. It's more I feel like in the West, it's uh, like more fake. No, so, 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 and that's what's a little, it's just it's, different. It's, it's, it came but, off. I'm like, is that, so you said the word came off in the West Coast. It feels like it's like, all right now, yeah. because people out where we from, yeah, it's really, it's black or white. It's black, yeah. yeah. But somebody truly might not even be thinking about what you got going on. Yeah. And, that, and they coming at you like, what you trying to do? Yeah. But in the West Coast, they really don't. And it's not everybody, but it's you, you, weird. For sure. Yeah. Like, it's just a different it, vibe. But you can feel that though. Yeah. Because whether you're in Cali, Oregon, Arizona, whatever, you can feel like folks really ain't going to bother me. They chill. In other places you like, in the South, you like, you looking like, do I want to go in here right now? Do I feel like <laughs> it? No, you got to think about it. Yeah. Okay, okay, here we go. So we're going to jump back. We're going to kind of shift the conversation. You want to go? I got. We got a couple more questions on recruiting. All right, cool. I want to talk a little bit about NIL. Yep, come on. Go ahead. Uh, so you previously had kind of told us your your history, your coaching history, and everything like that. And so you coached pre NIL, post NIL. Walk us through a couple of the changes on the team dynamic from a team dynamic perspective mm -hmm. on NIL, the surgeon, the surgeons of NIL. I'm pro NIL. Easily. Like this is a, a large machine that makes a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I think, Lord, please forgive me. I just think they let the cat out of the bag a little too early. Really? Meaning, I, I, agree. I agree. Only saying we're not, a, we're not with true proper limitations now. I always say this. I ain't mad at somebody who's a part of the blessing because the rules messed it up. For sure. Like, I can't, if that's how the rules Go are. For it. People who, rich people, man, rich people just be finessing taxes. If the rules allow you to do so. So why yeah. are you hating? You mad at me because I can't, because we don't know how to do it. Yeah. But if we Dang. got a billion dollars and we learn how to do it, I bet we'd be like, well, I don't know how to do it. Yeah. So, and all these kids that are in the class of 22, 23, 24, and these freshmen are getting so much money, I can't be mad at you. Yeah. If they're going to do it, somebody wants to not recruit properly and they want to throw a bag at you, and you are from a family, you ain't never seen that kind of money before, and you yeah. say, yeah. Why would you not? I got to respect it. Yeah. But I also got to look at it from the ends of, I think that messes up most people's teams and cultures because other people don't do it properly, and they just trying to get these young freshmen, and this kid that's been on your team have been producing for a long time, and they like, what's up? Yeah. And I think the NIL deal is a little bit more prevalent now because of the portal. Oh, my God. Okay, I so. Think, I think that's what makes the NIL is scarier than anything is because not only do you, most of these guys just hang a golden ticket over you. Literally. Mm -hmm. Once you get there, some of these people ain't doing right by the situations. They just saying something to these kids because these kids know a number like that looks amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then now what they do as soon as they get there, they're ready to hit the portal. So. They can pull that, that trigger was my next. Time. Yeah, that was my next question was. Um, how does the transfer portal affect high school recruiting? Because mm -hmm. you, I mean, the transfer portal with all the coaching changes this season and last season, how does that affect how you guys um, recruit in high school when you have already, you know, people Players. already performing at a um, collegiate level yeah. that are moving in between yeah. different universities? What does that do? I mean, it doesn't really, I mean, it hinders it a little bit. It really does. Mm -hmm. But, like, I'm on a road right now recruiting for yeah. high school recruits. I mean, mm -hmm. some people's, it's just like any other business. Yeah. Apple and Samsung do, do things two different completely ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, some people are going to go only portal. Some people are going to go only high school. Some people are going to do a little mixture of both. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think just for us, we're going to do whatever's going to be best to help us. So, if there's a kid in high school that's going to help us, we're going to grab them. Kids that help us in the portal, we're going to grab them. Do but you, you have to do, you. this is still football. You still yeah. got to develop people. Yeah. People think the portal's end all be all. I hate to say this because I want every kid to succeed. Some kids that hit the portal and never play college football again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. some people are getting lied to saying when you were getting recruited, you had 40 plus offers or whatever. Because at that time, that's what that positionings and scholarships and kids aren't. At that time. There it is. And yeah. kids, owners and things of that nature don't know the side of scholarship numbers, how many people do I have and all that type of stuff. Yeah. So some kids transfer thinking they about to go somewhere. Like dev charts. And that, yeah. and that place literally doesn't have a number or a spot for you. Right. Yeah. There's not even nothing they can do. So. Some people don't realize that, and you end up going to a lower level D one double A, and your your the trajectory going to become it's going to become much harder than you rather sitting where you at and grinding yeah. becoming a red shirt. I think the portal and NIL just makes it easier now to say I'm out. I think it aligns really well with um, just this day and age of social media. It's like almost a falsehood of instant gratification, a falsehood of like. The the if I don't like this, I'll just go here instead yeah. of watering the grass that's in front of you, right? Yeah. Water is funny. You say watering the grass is funny because it's like a little bit of some of this stuff is like watered down. Mm. Yeah. Because 
And it's no disrespect. So there's some kids who like the attention and they're complete ballers. And there's some kids who just, some kids just like the fact that their phone is blowing up. Yeah. I think a good example of what you're talking about is uh, Tate Martell. Mm -hmm. You know, he bounced around. How many schools was he? Four? Four or five, I think. But like, even, I don't know Tate Martell. I don't know that situation. Yeah. But I know he was a, a, a top. Yeah, he was a top, top, he was top, a top prospect, prospect. And there was probably four or five schools during his recruiting process. At some point, we're probably telling him, you're going to be the starter. You're going to be the guy. Yeah, but he Easily. kept, so he kept transferring mm -hmm. and uh, ended up not getting the starting quarterback job mm -hmm. and then would go somewhere else. And it's like, if you just stayed here, mm -hmm. it would have changed something. Yeah, and I don't know him. And yeah. it could be something with his personal. It could be something that happened at the school. Yeah, yeah. we don't know the story. Yeah, every situation is so unique. Yeah, for like, sure. But if, if you've transferred to that many schools or whatever the case may be, if you've been to a school, you get an opportunity to compete. Yeah. So it's like, end of the day, for us, for him, if he was better than another person, at the end of the day, I know a lot of players feel like coaches are like, oh, man, it's, he's, uh, he, he he picking on me, who all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. I can't speak for anybody else. Mm -hmm. The OGs and the people I've been around, it's clear as day. We got jobs. Yeah. It's so a business. If you, can't you if you can't consistently do your job. Mm -hmm. I have to do my job. <clears throat> I can't put you in there. Yeah, it is just what because yeah, that's your job. It's, it's nobody's fault. Yeah, it's like I don't love you no less, and that was the part where me being young, that's the only part I can kind of connect with a little bit more because I remember how I was feeling at times where I was like, "Man, my coach trying me this, that, and the third. I love my co coach tobacco, my old line coach. That's another one of my influences. But mm -hmm. about the biggest, but like to coach tobacco helped me be where I am right now. Uh -huh. And when I first got to Wake Forest, like we didn't always see eye to eye. I played early and all that type of stuff, but it was like, really, if we just had conversations, if I would have had them earlier with him. I love that man to death. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's really just conversation. Talking. So I try to have those transparent conversations with my guys where it's like, okay, you're not playing right now or I'm rotating you right now or whatever. That don't mean I don't like you. That don't mean you do not like, it just means you're not playing well enough right now. Let's get back in the lab. Let's make it better so we can all become better. But if you're not playing at a level that's, there's a standard that we, if you at Oregon, we want to win national championship. For yeah. sure. So if there's a standard that you're not playing at, we recruit. There's a 22 guys in our room. Yeah. There's only five positions. I like to be black and white and transparent in everything I yeah. do because then when we somebody tells me they want to go in the portal, I'm going to be black and white. Yeah. You're so, not playing because of this. You're not whatever the case may be. Do you think that you have a sort of advantage when it comes to recruiting because of your age? Uh, I think it's a, if there's pros and cons. For sure. Because it's to each give his own. A, give us some of them. There's families right now that are like, I don't want my son playing for that young man. Okay. There's some families that are saying... Oh, he gonna relate to my son extremely He's well. gonna relate. Yeah, I, I see. I, yeah, I have. I'm going to all these schools because I have to figure out. It's not if the kids want to play at Oregon. There's so many factors that go into it. And I say, I tell these young men, make sure you recruit the people that's recruiting you too, because you gotta want to be taught by them. You gotta want to be coached by them. When things get hard, you gotta want to <clears> be around there. Uh, so we had a, we had a South Oak Cliffs uh, old lineman coach uh, Zach here mm -hmm. a couple days ago. And we asked him, so I'm gonna ask you the same question. Shout out to all what, of my coaches. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what does a good recruit look like to you? Like, what are some attributes of a good recruit? Uh, it's unique to each his own. I mean, big, fast, and strong is like what you say. But like for old lineman, if you're like 6'5", 270, 280 in high school, mm -hmm. and explosive, play multiple sports. I mean, you're done. It's a done deal. I'm probably at your school trying to figure yeah, exactly. out. Yeah, exactly. But give me like, give me like a good recruit mentality. Like. So that's really more of what it is than anything. Like okay. We say what we're looking for is high character assholes. Okay. A really good, like old lineman, you got to know what your job is. Everything you do is you're, you're doing it from a disadvantage as old lineman. So mentally, I hope I have somebody who has the mental maturity to understand you're working from a disadvantage yeah. and you be mentally stable that if you do mess up, you're going to be all right. Okay. So that's the first part. And the second part is really, do you lead? Like, he, you, do you like... How are you when things get tough? Yeah. Because old lineman, you got to block some of the freakiest people on this planet. So mm. That's actually crazy. So even with... Um, so we're talking about... You just touched upon your recruiting. Um, how does the day-to-day -day look for you? How often are you on the road during off-season? How does that go? Kind of spit that out. Uh, it just depends on the time of the year. Right now, we just finished the season. So we're like in winter recruiting. Yeah. To be able to be on the road right now. So you can be on the road for like three weeks or something like that because this is now because in college there's two signing days we had the first signing day in december yeah we're recruiting was that this, early early it's like mid mid december that was december 20th so yeah it's like mid to late december yeah and you got one coming up yeah then we have the second one that's february 7th that's the og signing day day for sure. so okay. most people now you have your your class signed majority of the time by the first sign of day 
the guys that are signing in the second signing day. I was wondering day, what was different about that. That's not how it was when we were in high school, There's, right? there's some people that sign on the second signing day. February. But high school January. was always January, yeah, February, February when we so were So February, school. that's when the school does like the big mm-hmm. signing day deal. Okay. And that's when football is national signing day. Yeah. But because they allow for two and guys can uh, mid-year enroll, mm-hmm. okay. that's change why you, you change the game like that. So that's more so it than anything. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. So, so right now- Oh, my bad. No, you're good. No. So because of that- We'll go to February, we'll travel right now. And then once we get off the road, we'll have like off a few days and then we'll start getting the spring ball tra- training for spring and spring ball and have like a few weeks off in the summer. Things are more stable, kind of. Yeah. What is that like March, April ish? Yeah, March, April. I'm in. Yeah. Florida. Okay. And then May, we'll have spring ball. No, so, excuse me, March, April. And then May, I'll do this again. For I'll just that month? Basically, from May, January, end of January, and May is the big month of you traveling. When do y'all report? Y'all report the first week of June, right? And then once you get off the road in May, you'll be there in the summer for June. Camp is July? Yeah, so you know, you'll be in there in the summer of June, if I'm not mistaken. I might have it backed up. But you're either there for June or July, one flip flop, and then it's probably July, because July's end of July is camps. Yeah. So June, you'll be there working them out. Early July, you'll pack half off like two, three weeks, and then you'll be back late July to start camps, and then camp, like high school camps, and then you'll do high our camp will start. Late July, early August, and then you and that meet from August to February. I don't exist. Okay, so <laughs> from from that hectic ass schedule, what does your like social life look like? Because the three of us on these couches, we have very very different jobs, and so I mean, even just amongst the three of us, our social lives are mm-hmm. they have, like our inflation when we're busy with work. Is, is different. different. Jesus Christ, I know. Yeah. I mean, for my, I, as a college coach, you 24-7, you on. Yeah. Really. So what does dating look like for you? Do I you mean, date? And like, because of my profession, Yeah. I've said a long time ago, like, I really love what I do. Mm-hmm. I'm more focused on my ground because it does consume all of you. Okay. So, like, I'm, I'm blessed to be in this position, but it's probably because I, I consume all my time, space, and energy, really, on, Into that. on my craft. And it's because you can, like juggle multiple things but this is a, a job that you gotta i gotta care for 22 other people you gotta sure. make sure yeah. and then it's gonna be nights where <laughs> there's so much communicating in this profession when i recruit i gotta recruit a kid a family gotta talk to my guys all the time gotta talk to our staff all the time when the day is over most days i don't want to talk to myself for sure so once i get home it's and it's out of there and I'm then a- you get up at with the alarm at 4 45 and, and you do it all over running again back every single day when i have my meetings with my kids they expect me to be at my on point yeah sure if my guy asked me a question i can't be like uh yeah you gotta know i i got i'll get an answer for you but i should be on point most of the time so yeah. and that's just because i want to be good at my job some yeah. people probably don't care about that type of stuff so and i feel like if i continue to set this foundation right and do it right when that time is ready i'll have a foundation of this and i think that's a good outlook mm-hmm. that's a really really good I outlook don't, i'm big on putting being all in like what i don't want is somebody feel like maybe i'm just like how i love you need to be all in yeah. So if I can't be that, you don't want to do it. I don't want because I'm. I know I can't. For sure. Maybe somebody's. I, don't know, I just. I don't know. We um have a game for you to play. You know, you talk about how you love your players. Mm-hmm. We want to see how well you know your players. All right, let's do it. You ready? So is, it, so <laughs> is this is this uh end of third quarter? We're still in third quarter. We're still in third quarter. We're still going. Okay, okay, okay. Time's still going. We're still in third There's quarter. There's been a lot of call, play calls being <laughs> okay. played. The refs keep calling stuff. Connection. We say connection all the time on our team. Let's see if I'm connected for real. You know. Let's see if we're connected. We tried not to use freshmen. We tried to use people that have been there with you the whole year. Yep. Yeah. Okay. This is going to tell Let's y'all a lot about your coach. Yeah. Morgan O-Line. We'll see how much attention guys, you, play, you pay we'll to see. conversations. So you have... Eight names in front of you, mm-hmm. and then we have some descriptions, mm-hmm. descriptions, clues, mm-hmm. and you need to decide which player is who. Now you can change it, okay? So I will start by. I got the. You got the actual. Okay, mm-hmm. so you read off, and then you have the answer key. Yeah. This so guys, Nicole's gonna read like off. Turn this. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole's gonna start off by reading off. All the descriptions, so you can hear them all. Yeah. Everybody belongs to only one description. Okay, perfect. Here we go. All right, Nicole, start them off. Born in Harlem. Chopped cheese or Johnny Cornelius. Is that true? Is that right? I don't, oh, you're, I thought you were You reading. got the answer key. Alik, let her read all of them oh, first. My bad. <laughs> oh, oh, so my bad. I thought it's like 
boom, I say See, it. I'm so locked in. Well, Chop. some of them have similar descriptions, like are from the same city. So I'm like, read them all so he can know, hear the full description. Okay. And cool. then we'll go back and let you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he already knows. Already. Chachi. 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 Born in Harlem, New York, Rhode Island transfer. Chop. Chop. A Johnny Cornelius, our right tackle. Turn him up. Got you. Runs an Airbnb business on the side. We Okay, entrepreneur. <laughs> Airbnb on the side? Using that NIL. You know, NIL is more than just endorsements. You got an Airbnb on the side? Airbnb on the side and student athlete. Come it's, on, that's, that's, book, the, that's the one thing? Diary, that's the one thing? It. It's, on, it's on his Instagram. Because I did some deep, 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 some deep digging into these So players. you might have... Well, know. you can come back to it. You still have other yeah, descriptions yeah, yeah, to listen to. Come here. back to it? Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, uh, okay, it's, okay. It's one or two people I'm thinking right now. Cool, 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 cool. <clears throat> Finished top three in Oregon. 5A state championship in both discus and shot put. Uh -oh. I, feel like, I feel like that's see, that's one or two people. That's one or two people. In the state of Oregon, that's one or two people. I'm going okay. to wait. All right, here we go. <laughs> keep okay, going. so keep going. Yeah. Okay. yeah. University of Texas transfer, but originally from Salt, Salt Lake City, Utah. Junior is Big Junior. Big Junior. Is he correct? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I can't read your writing. Yep. Oh! That's the, Hold on. Okay, you know, you no, 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 no. Okay, you're right. You're right. <laughs> That's yes, for sure. It is Junior. It is Junior. Okay. It's Junior for sure. Oh and you can put the you can put the names inside. I'm, I'm yeah. already locked in. Who needed okay. chopped yeah, cheese? I know. Two out of two. You two out of two. Adopted at the age of three. Three. I already know what time it is. Double B. Yeah. Double B. Who's that? Oh. Bryce Bowl. Yeah. Okay. Double B. Yeah. You three for three. Captain of his high school high school basketball team for three years. Captain high school basketball team. <laughs> He's like I'm a college coach. <laughs> yes. No, no, no. It has to come up in conversation, right? Yeah. Maybe. We going, nah, I don't Three, Captain, I'm going to go whip. You're right. That's whip daddy. You are that's right. That's whip daddy. So the, the, so the top, so the if it's whip daddy that's basketball, the shot put in the discus is Ty Delgado. You are right. Oh, come on, man. Come <laughs> okay, on. He's five for five. The guys. You got like three more left. Pointing. Come on. You got three more left. Uh, Eastern Carolina University. That's, our, that's 50 ball. The shot. Okay, six out of six. Yeah, you say East, Car like, East Carolina. Like, East Carolina. I'm already locked in. East Carolina. That's my. That's that's our one of our East Coast East, East Coast guys. He got let out of class early to change his legal last name to their JPJ stepdad. Jackson Power shout, Johnson. Shout out to Step Daddy. Yeah, no, that's his, that's pops. Yeah, that's shout out to pops. That's, shout out to pop, father. That's pops. Jackson Power Johnson. He let he got let he left out of practice. Yeah, <laughs> to, to, yeah. <laughs> I, I, you yeah. can't say no, daddy. <clears throat> You can't. Like, you can't like that, that's that's fan for real. Like no, wait. You talk about court, court clothes. <laughs> like you, after you practice. Talk, you talk about God. His dad came to a game when I was in Minnesota. I, I helped recruit him mm -hmm. when I was a GA. His dad came to a game in Minnesota, not knowing I was coming back to Oregon the year after. So he came to a game. Him and his bud was at a game. We got us some field passes and stuff. Wow. Four months later, hey, I'm coming back to be JPJ's coach. Aww. Oh, so I know that was late. It was late. Yeah. So that, that family tremendous. I know I've helped recruit and all that type of stuff. So yeah, that was easy. JBJ. So, so you got one more. So that means, so that means it's five, 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 five. That's a bit Marcus. No, he. Yes, yeah, Marcus Hart. Born in Harlem. No, New that's, York. that's the Airbnb. They got an Airbnb. Yes. Marcus got an Airbnb? Yeah. yeah. When I said it was one of those two, it was either JBJ or Marcus. Marcus got a lot of endeavors. I didn't know he had a BNB already. I mean, it's five, on his, it's on his Instagram. Five got, yeah, let's say going to IG. He said he bought. Matter of fact, I got to go check him out if he's boxing, but. All the NIL, all the camera, all that five five like big smooth. His name is five five. Okay, okay. I'm sorry for shot time. Okay. Well, okay. So you guys have seen it here. Seven, he eight, knows eight, his. Eight. You're A for A. He knows his O line the very guys. well. And very that was quick. That was good. All right. That's you got dope. some more questions for him? I some stuff though. I ain't no, I I ain't no T Wizard was throwing that discus in that shot like that. Ty Ty Delgado. T Wizard World. I got. I'm like you know all these nicknames. I'm like. Do I know my? I got nicknames for everybody. That's how I get down. This is a. This is one of the last few uh, questions before we get to the, um, the trenches for real. Mm -hmm. So kind of two minute warning on a on a third. third. <laughs> um, so you've been jumping around, you know, making crazy major career moves. Mm -hmm. How do you feel like? You, how do you feel with Oregon being home for a while? Uh, I hope it is for a very long time. For sure. Like this is my dream job. A cool story. Like when I left to go to the Vikings, I had a conversation with the. OC at the time, 
he was like, where do you see yourself in five years? OC of Oregon or OC at OC at Vikings. Oregon. So okay. it was right before I left. It was, I was telling him I'm going to the Vikings. Okay. And he was like, why are you doing that? What are you trying to get done? He's like, where do you see yourself in five years? It's like, man, in five years, man, I hope I'm the offensive line coach at the University of Oregon. Amen. And at the time, he was the offensive coordinator at Oregon. He, I said, where do you see yourself in five years? He said, man, in five years, I uh, hope I'm the head coach at Arizona State. Nine months later, he was the head coach at Arizona State. Ten months later, I became the That just gave me chills. So uh-huh. you see how you Did said you speak? Yeah. So like it's big, big on manifestation, yes. big on that type of stuff. And I text him when I got this job. I said, man, thank you for making me say that out loud. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. You know we both said that. Yeah. And sure enough, like I'm big on man. Like I didn't realize even when I told you like I wanted to work in college football. Yeah. It's I'm big on even if you say it to yourself in the mirror, say it out loud. Say it. Say it out loud. Chest out. That's a good point. Shout out to shout out to KD. Show. So. All right, you ready? Let's get to the fourth quarter. All right, we're about to round out and finish in the fourth quarter of the Playbook Diaries. So this one is called, what is this one called? The Diary Entries? This is called Diary Entries. Yeah, our journals. And so these are more intimate questions. Um, Even though this whole interview has been pretty insightful, been pretty uh, intimate, great conversation. So uh, your first question is, girl... My handwriting? <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, okay. Switch back this <laughs> so, okay. What is a goal that you have outside of athletics? Provide for my nieces forever. Okay. That was easy. I don't have kids. So I that just I got, made my heart warm. I got 22 kids. I don't have my kids for real. Oh, you but scared like, me. I'm no, like, no, yeah. I don't know. know. You know. Good one. No, yeah. That's why I'm like, what? But my niece is not for I love my nieces. My How many? Babies. I got two of them. Mm-hmm. Aaliyah. Gotcha. Yeah, you are. Okay. Aaliyah and Amari. I want gotcha. to make sure Amari is the oldest right now. Aaliyah is the youngest. And I want to make sure they're good. Yeah. They don't need nothing from they, they ask me, they got it. They're, they're still in Miami. They're sweet. They're my, my sister, my mom. Dope. Um, what is something on your life bucket list right now? Other than football. I just not one off going to that go to State Warrior game. For sure. Oh, yeah. I okay. literally just said that. I literally that was just, a good I was like, man, that was a great bucket one. List. Uh, I think the next one, I love to travel. So, probably going to Costa Rica soon. So, Knocking it off the bucket list. Okay. Easily. Um, is this his last one or you got one more for him? I got one more. Okay. Second to last one. Um, if it wasn't sports, what would you be doing right now? Probably be a chef. Mm. For real? Okay, I ain't this round for no reason. Huh? I ain't this round for no reason. <laughs> okay. You like to eat. Not like eating. Like my, me, my pops, and like three of my closest homies. Like when we was young. You know, remember the show Man vs. Food? Yes. Yes. My pops took me and like three of my homies. We went to like three. Come out. My dad is from uh, West Virginia. Okay. And my family live in Ohio. And we was going to West Virginia and Ohio. So he like, man, we finna make a trip out of it. All the places that he did, Man vs. Food. You just go stop there. That's we fun. did it. I did like the sandwich. Oh, that is so fun. Know. Yeah, pop, main, main man. Main man. Main man took us out. Like the game, 105. He took the we was already going there. Yeah, yeah like so just make a trip just, out of it. Make trip places. out of it. Hottest wings in like the country. Try it. The pound of fries and pound and a half pound sandwich. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm like 12. I almost crashed. I'm, I'm going to get it. I'm young and fat. I mean, I'm just <laughs> okay. That was, that's a good one. Sure. That's a great one. Sure. This has been a really interesting interview. So one thing uh, we love to ask is what's the play? We try our best to live in the moment, but like, what's the goal? What's the dream? Just like you just said a couple of minutes ago, manifestation is a real thing. So like, what's the play? If... I can draw it up myself perfectly. Bringing Oregon his first national championship. Amen. Bringing Oregon his first Joe Moore award. I pray every year we have somebody drafted out of our room. Every right. single year. And That's beautiful. 15 years from now, God willing we do it the right way. Hopefully I can retire early. I got blessed. Again. <laughs> like, okay. I, I would say, I got, I was like now, I, I, got, I got blessed too early. Yeah, but I say that to say like I blessed to do it early, and I've been through the, the ringer a little bit. Yeah, it's like man, if I can do it in 15 years, I'm 28 now. That's so I can, still. That's, I got a ton of time, so I thank God all the time. But I, all the old people say, man, you ain't never gonna want to get away from it. If I don't, I'm straight. Okay, you having? You seem like you having a good time, sure. Yeah, I'm blessed. I say it's probably three much. I'm blessed. You are. That's awesome. Never stressed. Yeah. Even if you are a little bit, just say blessed, never stressed. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Bless. Never stress. Never stress. All right. Y'all ready to close out? We ready to close Appreciate out. Appreciate y'all, man. Y'all doing it. Y'all big time for real. We Labor enjoyed Dallas. having you y'all so much, Alik. This is a great interview. Thank Amazing. you for squeezing us in your busy, hectic recruiting. Y'all squeeze me in schedule. for real because I came in late. Y'all still, y'all still bless me. I appreciate y'all. 
So you guys have heard it here at the Playbook Diaries. This is Elite Terry. I'm Jordan. And I am Nicole. And we are signing out with the Playbook Diaries where there's a story behind every play. We'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Oh, God.